when Sayyidina Ibrahim السلام, was building the Kaaba, he made a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, Rabbi ja'alni muqeem as salati wa min dhurriyyati rabbana wa taqabbal dua. O oh my Lord, make me from amongst those who establish the prayer. And from my progeny, from my children, make them as well and accept from us our dua. The first command that Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam received from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he saw a mere glimpse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's jalal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he spoke to him and he said, Inni ana Allah, la ilaha illa ana fa'budni wa aqimi salata li dhikri. I am Allah. then there is no worthy of worship, no ilah other than me. Fa'budni. So worship me. Wa'aqimi salata li dhikri and establish the prayer to remember me. And it isn't for no reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he gifted the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the Salah, the command of five obligatory prayers. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala lifted him above the seven heavens, beyond Sidratul Muntaha, beyond the low tree that touches the Arsh of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He prepared him. Then he called him, he met with him, and he gave him a gift. All the other commandments from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were revealed on this earth, except for the command of salah. To show the value or the invaluable nature, infinitely valuable, in other words, nature of the Salah. And the Prophet ﷺ, he made Salah a distinction and he said, Al ahdu alladhi baynana wa baynahum as Salah. Aw kama qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the differentiating factor between us and them. The kuffar is salah. The Christians, they as well believe in the Lord of Musa and Isa and Abraham. The Jews, they as well believe in the Lord of Musa, Isa and Abraham. The Muslims, they as well believe in the Lord of Musa, Isa and Abraham. What is the difference? The difference is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He made us better and He made five prayers obligatory upon us. There's a saying, it is said, what use are your feet? Or what use are your feet going to be if they cannot, if they cannot stand you up and take you to the prayer? How do you expect them to stand up and take you to paradise, crossing the Sirat? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has certain obligations upon the believers. In other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has certain rights over the believers. And the right that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask from the believers, the first on the day of judgment is a salah. What did you do? about salah. 
about the prayers which we obligated upon you, what have you done? He said in the Quran, verily the believers have attained success. They have achieved success. So what is the first sign of success? Alladhinahum fi salatihim khashi'un. Those who are humble, humbly submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with khushu' with sincerity. And for those who have left the prayer, فَوَيْلُ لِلْمُصَلِّينَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ صَلَاتِهِمْ سَاهُونَ Woe is to those who pray. For those who pray, but they are forgetful in their prayers. See, this is a ladder, a hierarchy. Levels that need to be achieved for you to be promoted to the next level. The first thing that signifies a Muslim from a non-believer, from a non-Muslim, is salah. It is salah. The first obligation. The second of the five pillars. Then you move on to the next forms of worship. In terms of siyam, zakah, and hajj. My dear brothers and sisters, there is a hadith, a narration rather, that is attributed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is a da'if narration. But the meaning of this narration holds truth. As-salatu mi'raj al-mu'mini. Salah is the ascension of the believers. It is the ascension of the believers and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He called upon the believers and check the, look at the beauty of the structure of the prayer itself. You stand in salah and you put the dunya behind you. And you stand with respect and humbleness and humility in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You read to Him from His words. You speak to Allah. You speak to Allah. And then and then you make ruku' to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you get closer to Him. You praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you glorify Him. Then you come up. Then you bear witness that verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has heard your tasbih and your ta'zeem and your takreem. Then you go into sajda. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He informed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that my servant is closest to me when he is in sajda. You want your du'as to be heard? Make du'a in sajda. You want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you what you asked for. Or rather what is khayr for you, what is best for you. He will do that regardless. But when you ask, don't resort to complain when you don't see the results right away. One of the signs of a du'a that they said that is accepted, that the du'a is accepted, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He makes you make du'a for it over and over and over. And the best way to make du'a is in sajda. The best sajda is the sajda in salah. In the best salah it is, it is prayed with complete sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we are surrounded by the dunya, when we are surrounded by things that will make us forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a salah, your prayer, will be your protection, as the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said in the Quran, Inna salata tanha anil fahsha'i wal munkar. You experience tribulations in this life, it is a part of life. But you will not lose your iman. You won't lose your iman, and that is your most valuable asset. You won't lose your iman as long as you pray. As long as you pray. Salah will protect you from evilness and mischievousness. In the salat tanha'anil fahsha'i wal munkar. There can be there, there there is much to be said in regards with the importance of salah. My dear brothers and sisters, the bottom line is 
that if you don't have your prayer, because that is the threshold that keeps you in the fold of Islam, so if you don't have that threshold, where are you? If you do not have the differentiating factor, then where are you? Otherwise, there is a fine line between those who pray and those who do not. Those who pray are the farthest away from kufr and the kuffar. But those who do not pray, that line does not exist. And consider it an example. And the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, he was the best of examples. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, one of the last wasiyyat that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he left for his ummah. The last commandments that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he left for his ummah and he said, Allah, Allah, fi salawatikum. Fear Allah in the matters of your prayer. Fear Allah in the matters of your prayer. Fear Allah in the matters of your prayer. It is not much that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks of us five times a day. 17 minutes of total prayer time. 17 minutes out of the 24 hours where at least two hours we spend on social media. At least. And that is a very shy estimate of what the statistics say about how much time we actually spend on our phones. But, at least two hours we spend on social media, eight hours we spend at work, and the rest of the time? Say eight hours you sleep. But in actuality we're sleeping for at least 10 to 12 hours? Yes? And then there's no barakah in your life. There's no barakah in your life and there's nothing to protect you from the tribulations that you face and for those tribulations to take you away from Allah. There is a good side and a bad side to social media and from the good side, I heard one of the scholars, he said that one time someone asked him a question, they said, I feel far from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I feel far from Allah. So he asked him, he said, who moved? Who moved? Allah's word is eternal and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us He's closer to us than our jugular vein. So who moved? Salah is the bare minimum, my dear brothers and sisters. It is the bare minimum that a believer has to fulfill that obligation in his day-to-day -day life. If you do not pray five times a day, however much you pray, add an extra prayer to that. You pray Luhr or you pray only Isha, when one, you pray one salah a day, add another prayer. And it starts today. If you initiate the change, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you. That is a promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leads us to najah. It leads us to success. It leads us to falah. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us live as Muslimin, to grant us istiqamah on the obligations that he gave us. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to raise us amongst the salihin on the day of judgment.